Hey guys, what's up? Alex over at Laser Everything, and we're here at Light Object today, and we're gonna be testing some of the differences between the JK and SPT tubes. Marco's actually got some strong preferences, I would say, towards JK and SPT, but they do have some differences, and we're going to take advantage of the test bench over here to point out what some of those differences are. Okay, so next up uh, on our list, I know you want to go play with the Ranger. I do, and we'll get there. We will get but, there. Like, I am really excited to go check out the Ranger. Yeah, in, I know. in more detail. We like, will. But first, we need to check out <laughs> Heart of the Ranger. We do. Yeah, which yeah. is the SPT and JK laser tubes that Marco loves here. We actually just got the chance to talk to him about it a little bit. So you'll be hearing from Marco while we're doing some testing yeah. and uh, be able to see some of that as well. But in order to really show how well these tubes work, and we'll take a closer look at them in a minute. First, I'd want to head over to the testing bench. They actually have a full testing station here yeah. to check the laser output power that they're getting out of these tubes and like be able to make adjustments. Every single one that comes in, they take it out of the box, right? Yeah. And they get it on the test bench, check the output, something's not right get set aside or fixed mm -hmm. before it gets put in is the that, machines. Is that right, Marco? Yes, sir. Every tube that gets put in a machine goes on that test bench first? and yes, it's we, yeah. we have to test it before that goes. Yeah. Right, great, perfect. So uh, you heard it here first <laughs> from the man himself. Every tube gets tested before it goes out the door. I wanna see the testing station. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. go do it. First, we wanted to describe a little bit of the setup for you guys. You've got your chamber in the center here. This whole outer area is what gets filled with water, as well as the coil, which you can kind of see back here, chilling the center core. You've got your power supply hooked up, which this power supply is running on this one for our tests. And then we've got another power supply back here that's gonna power. So that was the SBT in the front. And then this power supply is gonna power the one in the back. Basically, that's it. And you can see the water inlet lines and exit lines. We've got our chiller down here to make sure that even during the testing, these things stay cool. And there are two ends, <laughs> right, Alex? Yeah. There is the business end, which is extremely dangerous because of lasers. And then there is the butt end, which is the other one, which is extremely deadly, dangerous. deadly yeah. dangerous. Because of voltage. Because of voltage. Yeah. So either one of these, you definitely want to stay away from if you're ever <laughs> running this kind of experiment. Yeah, absolutely. So over here, we have the two different heads of the lasers. In the front, again, is the SPT, and what you're seeing right here, this is actually a little extra bulky, and that's because the SPTs have an option to come with a pre-installed beam combiner that fits right on the nose of the laser, so you don't need to worry about combining your beam somewhere else in your system, which is extremely convenient. The downside to that is that you are going to see a slight reduction in peak power. These are both 100 watt tubes, but the JK is gonna peak power around 120 watt, where Joel was telling us a little earlier, due to the beam combiner, minor on the SPT, you're gonna see more like a peak power of 105 watts. Personally, if you're upgrading like an ohm tech, like a red and black machine, I think that's an easy trade to make. But if you really need the extra cutting power, you may wanna consider something like the JKs instead. Now back here, we have the JK laser tube, and this has kind of a funny end too. You'll see that there's a bunch of set screws actually around the outside here. And these set screws are for aligning the inner mirror. So essentially what's happening inside a laser tube is your focus photons are bouncing back and forth inside of this area really, really fast, but they're all moving different directions. And only when they're all moving the same direction can they exit through the exit at the front of the tube. In order to get the most power possible out of the end of the tube, all of those photons need to be moving like perfectly straight. And if your front mirror alignment is off here, you're going to see a reduction in your overall power. JK actually provides the set screws so you can make those adjustments to get the most power out of your tube. Unfortunately, it's pretty difficult to test that unless you have some kind of a power meter, which we have here because we're at a testing facility, but they are very expensive. So that may not necessarily be useful to the average consumer unless you have the means to test a CO2 laser tube. And that's something that we'll be taking a look at a little later on. Here's our target, which is essentially a ceramic plate and then a whole lot of heat sinks to make sure that we're pulling as much power away from the target area as possible. Don't mind the aluminum foil. It's 
just there as protection in case we accidentally hit one of the wires with the beams we don't want to damage the wires because the co2 will cook through that plastic so all we're doing is we're firing from the tube and we're going to hit the target it's going to generate heat that heat is going to be read and calculated into the output wattage of our laser so we are actually hitting this sensor with the laser and it's going to tell us how much wattage we're getting from the tube it's fairly easy to read the higher we go on the meter the more wattage we're putting out as we turn up the milliamps on our power supply we should be getting a higher reading from our laser we're going to do some experimentation with the power meter to show the difference in the output due to that beam combiner but before we do that we want to test fire our experimental setup here to make sure that the both of the lasers are functioning as intended so Excellent. we can go ahead and pull the trigger on these yeah. get them fired up and uh make something happen let's take a couple shots let's take a couple shots okay make sure you also keep an eye on the tube tubes should light up we try to dim the lights so you can see the tubes light up how many how long of a blast do we want to do enough to fill the room with smoke or like what are we thinking? a couple seconds two to two, three two seconds. seconds yeah all right on three yeah one two three test definitely a five watt difference there did you see it oh yeah it really hits like that 110 112 and just yeah that's it yeah where it wants to stay okay 20 milliamp test Now we're going to bring it down to 10. Down to 10. Okay. You have to live bring it down to 10. There you go. Now I'm going to do your 10. Wow. Down to 60 watt. Yep. Let's try that again. Ten milliamps. Right around 60 watt. So that's watts. basically all it's doing when you're dropping your power level. All it's doing is dropping the milliamps. Right. That's how it's adjusting your laser to your power. And let's see how things go as we dial it back. Now well, we're going to head down to 20. Let it reset and 20 milliamp test. I believe we were getting 60. Or no, the 60 was uh, 10, right? Yeah, now we're at like 95. I don't uh, recall. I think it was at like 100. Mm -hmm. It was like, uh, yeah. And now we're going to drop uh, to 10. 10 milliamp test and reset and 10 milliamps. About the same. Yeah. So as we get lower, we definitely start to see it even out. Oh yeah. So what did we learn? Well, the SPT is going to be better if you have something like an ohm tech where you're going to want to upgrade the device and add a beam combiner because it's built into the tube. So all you really have to do is swap out the tube and you're good to go. You've got a beam combiner. If your system already has a beam combiner or you need a lot of power for cutting, the JK might be the better option for you. Since the JK's output isn't hampered by a beam combiner at the nozzle of the laser tube, it's going to perform a lot better at higher wattages. We also noticed during our testing that the difference between the tube with the beam combiner built in, the SPT, and the tube without a beam combiner, the JK, is far less noticeable at lower wattages. So if you're working at lower wattages, it may not make as much of a difference to you. With all that said, guys, I think that's about everything there is to know about both of these lasers. They both offer excellent warranties, and Mark was really excited to be able to have both of them here at Light Object. 
Playing with them was a lot of fun and it was great to see that their power ratings were accurate using the power meter from Newport. So I'm really, really pleased with what we got done today. I hope you got something out of this episode. And if you're looking for a new laser tube, of course you can find links to the two that we tested below and many, many more for all different kinds of systems over at lightobject.com. We do have an affiliate link down in the description if you wanna help out and support the channel. Don't forget to smash the like button. Let everybody else know the content is good. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time we upload a light object episode. Remember, if you love the channel and it's the best thing that ever happened to you, don't forget to sign up for the LMA. It's the number one way to support the channel and it's thanks to our members over there that all of our content is uploaded to YouTube for free for everyone. If you wanna find out more about that, make sure you head over to Masters lasereverything.net to get all of the details. Anyway guys, Michael and I have a lot more filming to do. Uh, so much more stuff here at Light Object that we need to document and test and take care of. So that's all I've got for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.